Good evening, this is Oliana Poon. I'm Oliana Poon. I'm the Managing Director of Leve Global and one of the elements of Leve Global is Leve the event. Welcome to Tobago and welcome to Leve. This is our fourth Leve and the theme of this Leve is fashioning our future. We want to fashion a future that we want, a future that we want to, to be proud of. We want our kids to be proud of. And it really it's about showing that we here in the Caribbean, we have it all, but we have to be honest with ourselves. We're not doing enough to care for this beautiful and wonderful climate and temperature and weather and world that we have, and we need to do something about it. And Levy is about a statement, it's about really bringing our art, our aesthetics together. First of all, to show the world that we have it all, but also a plea to help to protect it and to keep it in the pristine state that it could be. This Levy, we are celebrating fine art, incredible cuisine, we have, of course, food. We have incredible fashion as well. We have some chocolatiers. We have rum, rhythm, food. And we want to show the world that we have arrived. We make the best chocolates here in the Caribbean in between. We have the best rums. We have the best fashion. We have the best designers and some of the best fine artists, as you can see for yourself. And we believe that we, you know, our time has come and our art is fine enough to be shown in our hotel rooms and in our villas and everywhere else. We don't have to import these things anymore. And I think Leve is about elevating. It's about elevating talent. All aspects of talent of the people of Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. And this is where we want to see the world really going. Sarah is a beautiful village which you all know and it's a place that I love and it's a place that I grew up and my life here has been very good my whole life. But what I'll give you the history of Costa for all my years um, I live here. I'm born here, I grew up here, everything. I never leave here before this ever reached it in Trinidad, which I like very much. And as time goes on things have changed from in the, in the, in the 60s to now. But when we were coming back in the 60s, in the 60s, what we used to what we have after the because have been developed with the with, from the PNM administration. You understand? We changed and we started to get a little work and thing in Castara. And transportation was so hard in Castara. So if you want to go out to get out of Castara, you had a man, two person here had transport and you had all you have to put in your application to go out to Castara to, to Scarborough. In weeks in advance. Well, the village itself, it's a beautiful place. Um, the vibes is very warm. As you would see, it's a very family-oriented village. It's lovely. The, the people in the village make you feel like you're literally a part of the village without even being from here. Um, there's very low crime, as you see, so you could afford to be a little more free and relaxed. And, um, well, yeah, that's basically it. You would love it. You would love it. Well, I think when most people or most tourists look at an island or they think of like the island life, they think of like, you know, the, whole, the natural, you know, they want to mix in with the, um, with the community and with the villagers. Most people are not looking for a big fancy resort or like that kind of, like that kind of vibe. They're looking for the nice, natural, secluded, you know, lifestyle. They want to go hiking, backpacking, all this kind of stuff. So when they come to Castara, they have, they feel like they have that, that aspect or they're fulfilling that aspect of like what they're searching for. So. Um, most people avoid most of the um, large hotels and they come for more like a guest house experience, a nice little shack. They could, they could even sleep on the beach, I, I don't think they will mind, but you know, most tourists are they're enticed by that and I think that's what um, always has um, Castara's like, um, guest houses like full all year round. So. Well, if anything. Well, I mean, I grew up here all my life. I, I always used to come here when I was younger and I think what to me, it's like I'm of a, a magical place. I think what made me really realize that was when I, I went to college and I'm in the US. And I think as soon as I came back here, the first day, like a couple of hours since I came here, this was the first place I come. You know, it's just like, you know, you get to forget, you know, since it's like, look at the area, it's just secluded from the rest of um, the village. It just feel like a, a private, a private zone. You could relax, you could de-stress, you know. You could have a nice, a nice bar, a nice cool bar, you know, it's just, it's just a place where you, you could just, you know, rest and reflect on, you know, 
and what really matters in life. So. Um, on a Wednesday night, you have something called bon, not bonfire, no, um, the boom tongue. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, that's it. Um, we call it boom tongue. That's, that's where just the local the name. Local for name for it. The local name for The slang. The slang. <laughs> so, being really enjoyable. Um, the tourists love it because there's a lot of drumming. There's a lot of things that we would have had back in the days, basically. Um, Castare has done pretty well to maintain that level of heritage and that level of history, you know, um, the limbo, the fire, the, the drinks, the, just the general vibe of the area. It's so positive that you would not want to leave. Tobago, uh, I've moved to Tobago about nine years ago, nine or ten years ago I think it is, to work at Magdalena and from then I moved to different restaurants and hotels and I've now gotten my opportunity to open my own restaurant. Uh, it's a little different to what everyone else offers here in Tobago. It's a, it's a small little place, it's cozy. Um, I made a little theme, excuse me, I did a little theme about what, we, what, what I'm offering this evening. Love, sustain and inspire yourself. So the food this evening, I have kind of, how to say, I've prepared it with, these, with this theme in mind. Most of it, it, it evolved. It evolved in a way because I like to eat natural. And I was planting for myself and everybody in my family was amazed that I actually was, the thing was looking beautiful, right? And so it looked like I had a green thumb. And uh, the food that I wanted to eat, I started planting it like that. Like the spinach and the bhaji and the pumpkins and the, all the seasoning. I didn't think I should have to go and buy it if I have the dirt on the ground here, right? So I just started planting all my herbs and everything and, um, and added to it. I added cassava to it because I was making corn. Corn is another thing I make. I added sweet potatoes. I, I just sort of like started adding most of the things, the ingredients that I would need to do what I wanted to do. This way I know that it doesn't have any chemicals sprayed on it, right? I'm an artist too, right? And um, I just like to see things being created. You know, like if, I, if I, I'm doing a yard, I'm doing this, I want to do it in a way that aesthetically it look like I want to be it. You know, I want it to look perfect to some extent. Um, when I want my kids, they're all grown up now, right, and they're doing their thing, I wanted to come home to do something for myself, right? And uh, I saw my brother with, I actually saw my brother with an oven, right? And I'm like, okay, if I combine the oven with the food, and I love socializing, I love talking with people. First, uh, I'm Glenn, let me introduce myself, I'm Glenn Chan. I'm privileged to be called uh, a senior trainer artist. I take that with a little pride because the fact that I live in New Jersey, I spent my whole career trying to develop a Caribbean visual consciousness. Now, I had the pleasure of being asked to contribute some work for this special event. And um, I decided that I knew for a fact that this was going to be special because for me, it will give me an, an opportunity to show what I have been trying to do for quite a long while. Uh, a couple of months ago, I did a painting inspired by David Rudder called Within My Caribbean Belly, where I coincidentally suggested that our Caribbean belly, our Caribbean consciousness, comes out of the Boko Reef, that kind of aquatic awareness. This painting here is the one that I painted within my Caribbean belly. Uh, if you look, you can see a, 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 a visualization, an abstract visualization of the Boko Reef, the Caribbean womb, and if you look to the center, you would see a circle uh, overrun by another circle. It's, it's really the nucleus of our consciousness. 
which I think is a steel pan. The rhythm of what I call the uh, living vibration. So you have the nucleus and around it you have other parts of the womb that give the life entity. Now when I was asked to do this special uh, series, I thought of continuing this in particular and um, so I took it into another dimension but a little less abstract. You see the thing, I, the thing that I haven't studied in many universities and haven't lived abroad is that I find that a lot of our young artists in particular try to create a visual kind of awareness that is a little beyond our consciousness. I think it's a waste of time creating pieces that is so above our consciousness that we don't try to understand. So what I did with my work and my abstract pieces, I decided to try and um, create a kind of language, a kind of echo that reaches out to more of the public. So from this pure abstraction, you have what I call semi-abstraction, where now you can actually see fragments of, of the bookery. I even, I even use materials from the bookery, like shells and things like that. To me, this gives the, the Caribbean man a chance to uh, uh, equate himself with his visual awareness. Um, here, I transformed the Boko Reef into a carnival band, where the uh, reef and, and the coral and all that kind of thing uh, creates a kind of rhythm, right? that gives itself a sort of visual harmony. Um, I continued. Now, when I was a young man, I worked with Kala Zhang for many years as a costume designer and mass creator. So what I did with these pieces, I incorporated some of my experiences with wire bending and, and formed objects and, and jewelry and that kind of stuff. And thus, you can see it's happening here. Like here, for example, is a picture of a woman who has transformed herself to a, 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 a cannibal character. You know, the purpose is that uh, the purpose is that uh, I make something with uh, recycled material. In this case, it's a kite. A kite is made of really performance uh, parachute uh, fabric. Fab so it's made of a uh, high performance parachute material. It's a super light. So I brought it in in my luggage from Curacao. And the idea is like the 60 children we work with at Space Side College, um, they're gonna have, their, this is like the first exposition. And after this, it's gonna move to a mall. Um, it's gonna be exposed there. And after the mall, it goes back to the children at school. Now the funny thing is, uh, the same kid will never get his own work back. So it's, you're gonna get something from another child. And once they have it, it's theirs. And the idea is that they can travel with it on the island or whatever they want to go with it. Well, this painting is called The Beginning and the End. It depicts the Columbus ships. When Columbus came, they came as sharks to destroy. That's what the painting depicts. It is the beginning and the end. The king and the Caribs or the Kalinagos ended their way of life. Oh, well, it's the sea that turned into blood, yes. And in Dominica, there's a revival of Kalinago culture, their way of life. So, because I am part Kalinago my, from, on my father's side, I depict this one would call it the bird dance. It's the bird dance. This one really it is a youth painted in Ruku. As you know, they painted their bodies with Ruku to for insects and cer ceremonial purposes. You have cer ceremonial practices that still you can still see. And this is a shaman playing, they have something they call the smoke catcher where they dance on fire and the guys, the shaman plays the flute so just that, that, that's just a little section of that ceremony 
Up here we have, as I said, the, they have a dance called the Brit Dance. This is part of the Brit Dance. And the spot portraits of how they decorate themselves during ceremonial purposes. Say the Kalinago culture is very alive and vibrant in Dominica. There's a, a renaissance and I use real people, real Kalinagos alive today because they are ancient Kalinagos but we still have them in Dominica. They are the first inhabitants of the Caribbean. Good morning. Well, my name is Marie Jose Edwards, and as Oriana said, I am I'm the past director of tourism. That's for the last 23 years. I have my own business company, and I've continued working in ecotourism development and sustainable development. Dominica has always been, you know, described as a major island of the Caribbean, mainly because our tourism product has been developed based on our natural resources. Just to give you a little background, Dominica is 290 square miles, a small island. It is the most, is the most northern of the Lesser Antilles, located between Guadeloupe and Martinique. So in fact, conservation has been a major aspect of Dominica in terms of its development. And really and truly, we don't have a choice. Small island states are very small and they are discreet. And if you do not um, develop them sustainably, you will lose what you have. So in fact, our natural resource base has been, the, has been our, our major attractions. Um, we boast two species of endemic parrots, the Amazon parrots, and quite a number of endemic plants and animals. But quite apart from that, in order to develop our ecotourism product, we have also developed our cultural resources. For example, you know we have the last Carib Indians in Dominica. So we do have the Carib territory, which we now call the Kalinago territory. Because the Caribs don't want to be called Caribs anymore, they want to be called the Kalinago, which is their name. And we, within the Carib territory, we actually have a Carib village, which is the only Carib village in the Caribbean, where you can come in and see how they live before Christopher Columbus. That, you know, and of course we have a World Period Music Festival, which is again part of our culture. We have Carnival. Like Trinidad, of course, we are not in a league, but what we try to develop is our what is natural to the to Dominica, and that's what we try to promote. We, we cannot compete with Trinidad, so we look at our local, and you know, and these kind of things. 